Our second example is slightly more complicated, but here you will see how we can create a CDR form with not only read-only fields, but with read-write fields. And we will use the IMX CDR editor component directly. Okay, so here we are on the page of our service categories. Let me search for one. And again, like in the previous example, when I click on one row, we will see uh, the properties, the CDRs here. And like also in the previous example, you have to tell the form which properties to show. Yeah. Now, this is again the parent component, service categories. That's the component which also includes the table. And when you click on a row, this handler will be called. Now, here's a lot of stuff. It's not interesting really for this example, but let's again put a breakpoint here and, um, and I will show you uh, again how to get the, the column names or the list of columns. And this time it's a little bit different, but you will understand the concept much better. Okay, so, so let me go back to the table and reopen that category. Again, as you can see, the breakpoint is hit. What I want to show you is, because again, it's the same pattern like in the previous sample, so you inject the list of columns you want to show in that form uh, here. And with the address book, it, it, you know, the, the, it, it was not a list of column names, but real objects. And, but you don't have to do that. So in this case, this, um, the config object contains everything you want to show, but it's only a string a list of strings with the name of the column so not with the not with the column objects but all, but only with the names um, okay so we pass that via the side sheet to the child component to the details component we go there and then here and, and this is the detail component again we have the list of column names, that's this guy here. And what we will do, we will use that list to create the real CDR list and then we will show them in the template. And how will we do that? Okay, so let me just show you that, how it will work. In the constructor what we are doing, so we grab the injected data, yeah, and then we have this function here, create CDR list, yeah? and this function will create the list of CDR editors. And that's pretty simple. In the end, this is the only, uh, the only line which is important. So what you do, so you have a list of CDRs, yeah, and then what you do is you create a new base CDR. And again, the underlying CDR system will figure out what that column is, if it's a date, if it's more a complex thing, and will create the correct editor. Yeah. So we are creating a CDR list. We are and pushing for every column a new base CDR object. And the only thing what we need is the name of the column. Yeah, okay. And so this is pretty simple. And then once we have the CDR, the CDR list, uh, you will see what will happen. Again, the template is more or less empty. Let me just add a little bit more code here. Oh, where is it? Where are my snippets? So one thing about, CD, about CDR editors and the CDR system is 
um, in the underlying CDRs, we are using form fields. So what you have to do, you have to create a form. And now when I say a form, I'm talking about, of course, an HTML form, a template, but an Angular reactive form. And what does that mean? Um, on the Angular I.O. side, you can see what forms are. I, I think you are familiar with that, but you have to understand that you have to create a form with a form group. Uh, you can read it here and we can put the link in, in, into the video. There's a pretty good introduction, so you can see here under the, in the developer guides, you have the form section and, and what we are using are reactive forms. I guess you know that already what reactive forms are, but you have to be aware of that because otherwise it will not really work. Yeah. So we create a form um, with a form group. And of course, if I would save this, nothing would change in the browser because we have a form, but it's still empty. So let me add the editors. And basically it's more or less again one line. Let me add the editors. Now here is our form and here is our CDR editor. And remember the property viewer, it's more or less the same approach. So we have a list of CDR editors and then we loop through that list, yeah? set the CDR so the current item, and I will create this guy. I will talk about this method in a second, but that's it, what you have to do. Uh, setting the CDR, and this is not uh, one identity specific, it's more Angular specific. Uh, what this guy does is, when we go there, because we are using reactive forms, I'm in the wrong file. Where is it? Here. The only thing what we are doing, we are adding to that reactive form all the controls because we need that for the underlying CDR. That's all. Yeah. Okay, now let me just save this. So we don't need this breakpoint any longer. Okay, let me delete it again. Let's go, oops, to that service category. And now you can see we have all the properties in this form. So you can see that most of them are not read only. I even don't know if one of them is read only. Okay, but you can see, for example, that the first column is mandatory. You see the red star. The second not is optional. Then, because the CDR figured out that this column is of a very specific type, yeah. so this, by the way, is an um, FK editor, CDR editor. What you can do here, and again, you don't have to care about that because the C yourself, because the CDR system will do that for you. It will figure out, like I mentioned before, the type uh, of the column and then it will magically do what it has to do. In this case, it's a foreign key. Um, you can select an item here, yeah. Or that's the same. Of the, so this column is of the same type. Here we have a drop down list, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, Imagine you would do this by hand for all the tables, for all the detail views that would be really, really tedious. Okay, one thing I want to show you is what happens when you look at the DOM, so at the template, what really happens there, because I guess it's pretty interesting. Okay, so let me select this. Let me make this a little bit wider. Okay, now 
this element is the house side sheet. And then we have the mat card and then we have this form. And then, as you can see, we have a lot, so these are the, 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 the columns, we have a lot of these IMX CDR editors. Yeah. And that's basically something like a wrapper or the parent and the underlying system, like I mentioned before, will figure out which editor it has to select. Yeah. So, for example, you can see the very first column is a string. Yeah. In this case, we are using the edit default editor. So, and then it consists of other stuff, but it does not matter. Um, so the system figures out, okay, this is a string, I can use this editor. Yeah. The second one is also a string, so that's not interesting. But the third one, this one, is a little bit different. And here the system figured out that this is an FK, so it's using a different editor. Yeah. And that is more or less the approach how, how we are doing this. Now, what we will do, there will be a sample because right now I'm, I'm using existing code, so the address book and the, the, uh, the service category list, but we will add uh, a sample with real sample code on GitHub. It will take some time, but it will be there. So one last thing I want to show you today and why it's so easy and efficient to use CDRs is the following. So let me close this guy, let me go to the network tab and reopen this category. Now when you look at the request, the real request is here. So you can see, oh let me make this wider. You can see the request and the response with the columns. Here are the columns. But then you can see that there are a lot more requests. And what are these requests? Basically, for example, here, because that's an FK, it's looking for candidates for this column. Yeah? Here it's the same, so on and so forth. Which does mean if you implement that manually, you have to do this over and over again. And in this case, you don't have to worry, you don't have to care, because the CDR system will do that for you. So as you can see, the create CDR list method is right, right now more or less empty. So we have an, we declare simply an empty CDR list, and as, as I mentioned, we will uh, add a an array of column names and then uh, um, uh, um, using that column name so we'll create the CDR editors. Okay, so let's do that. Let me go to my snippets and replace this here with this. And again, we are working with interactive entities, right? Not with static ones. But the way how you create the CDR editors are the same, no matter if it's static or, or interactive. So basically, first we declare the CDR list. Then we, I, I, we have prepared a list of column names, of basically of strings, an area of strings. And then the important part is exactly this line. So we create, we create a CDR editor and the input parameters of this function is the, is the entity, it's an i-entity, in this case the implementation is an interactive entity, and the column name for that CDR editor. So this, this factory service will figure out what exactly that column is, because it will look into metadata and then it will find out if, if it's, for example, a date, if it's an FK or whatever that is, yeah and will build the CDR for you. Now, this here is in the, um, in the CDR section, so it's implemented in QVM under the CDR, in the CDR module here, yeah. So you can simply use it, so you don't have to rewrite it or, 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 you know, change it. You can simply use this function so we will create the CDRs 
for these columns and then we will push each CDR editor into the list. And this is all we have to do. Okay, so now we have created this function, meaning that we have now our CDR list we want to show in the side sheet. And the last thing we have to do is to add in the template um, the CDR form. And let me, let's do that. Let me first delete this here and add this, this fragment of HTML. So what we are doing here, this is the side sheet content. Uh, we are using a mat card and this is all you have to do to create the, the CDR editor. So basically the details of, of that typed entity. It's, again, the important part is it's exactly like in the address book. There are no special steps. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. Now let's save this, compile it. Okay, now how does our side sheet look like? As you can see, now we can see all the details here. Yeah, And again, like, like in the example with the uh, policies, you can also see here, if I change something, so let's say I'm changing the service category. Yeah. Let me grab, I don't know, access lifecycle, I like that. You can see here that internally, and again, without any line of code from your side, the CDR form talks to the API service, and then the API service updates the values and sends the updated interactive entity back to the form, so you don't have to care about that. Okay, so that's all about CDR, uh, about CDR editors and the CDR uh, system, and thanks for listening, and see you next time. Thank you very much, Rafi, for this interesting thoughts about the CDRs in the Identity Manager and your web portal. And now it's time for some editor notes. As an editor, I have to tell you that with that video, we end part three of the Angular web series. Part three was talking about how to customize the Identity Manager web portal using the Angular web frontend. We will continue this web series just with part four and part four will talk about how to extend the API server. That means the underlying base of that Angular web portal. The API server is a REST-based web service and we will show you how it can be used and how it can be extended. However, this is an open video series and that means we can as ever we like, and it makes sense, add more videos to the different parts, which might happen in the near future. Nevertheless, this is the official end of part three, and I really hope that I see you in part four again.